All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us. We're here with Mayor Robinson this afternoon. Um, we just wanted to take a few minutes and go over the recent um, proclamation by Governor Reynolds yesterday, how that might affect you as residents of Spencer, and give you an update on some uh, internal operations and how we continue to do business as an organization. Um, we ask that if you have questions that you submit them through the chat feature and we will we'll attempt to answer them uh, as we're able. So with that, I will kick it over to Mayor Robinson. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, I'd like to first of all thank the staff, uh, the city leadership and staff for all the actions and all of the things that they're covering at this time to keep the city open and functioning. As we started this process, we told you our commitment is twofold. Number one, to make sure that our city government is in place. We keep our workers healthy. Uh, we don't have disruption to the services that you expect as a citizen in town. And then we also said that we're going to take the community mitigation steps necessary to try to keep everyone as safe as possible through the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic that we are currently in. And so I just wanted to take some time today to talk one-on-one -on -one with you, answer any questions you might have. Uh, we don't have any other healthcare professionals or anybody else from the community here today, but we told you at the beginning we wanted to reach out about once a week to do this, uh, to get some interaction between us and the community, and so here we are. So where we are at today, uh, yesterday, the proclamation from Governor Reynolds, I'm going to grab my phone here and read. She expanded the closures, and I just want to cover those again. So she added to the closure list uh, for businesses malls, tobacco or vaping stores, toy gaming, music, instrument, movie, or adult entertainment stores, social and fraternal clubs, including those at golf courses. Quick, quick clarification on that. So the courses themselves are open, but the clubhouses are closed for meetings, any social gatherings, anything like that. The, the clubhouses are basically shut down to the point where only the resources necessary to go out and conduct golf in a safe manner are open so you're able your ability to pay and uh, things of that nature so with that also our bingo halls bowling alleys pool halls arcades and amusement parks museums libraries aquariums and zoos racetracks and speedway roller or ice skating rinks and skate parks outdoor or indoor playgrounds and children's play centers and campgrounds uh, we do have, uh, of course, there are some spontaneous as well as some organized parades that are going around. I believe, uh, you know, we might have church services that are going on as well. I want to give you some clarification uh, what the governor said yesterday related to those. Let me find that here for you. It's in section four, mass gatherings. Uh, so social, community, spiritual, religious, recreational, leisure, and sporting gatherings of events, more than 10 people are hereby prohibited. Um, if you have 10 or less, these are the clarifications. A gathering of people inside parked cars, trucks, or other enclosed motor vehicles shall not constitute a gathering of more than 10 people if no more than 10 people are inside each vehicle, all people remain inside the vehicle at all times, and the vehicle remains enclosed with all windows, sunroofs, and convertible tops closed. Planned large gatherings and events must be canceled or postponed until after termination of the disaster. So if you are participating in these parades, um, if you are attending a church service, the governor has issued that uh, your vehicle must remain closed. Again, all windows, sunroofs, um, nobody is to uh, exit or enter the vehicle if you are in attendance at these. Last night at our council meeting, we talked about masks. The CDC over the weekend changed their stance on masks. They now uh, do recommend if you're in public to wear a mask. That could be a cloth mask that you can wash and reuse. It could be a simple dust mask. Uh, it could be an N95 mask, uh, that's the, the most popular, obviously. But uh, cloth masks are okay, provided that they're washed on a regular basis. We did put the request out for about 500 of those cloth masks. Um, we've had uh, some very generous people step up, and I, I believe we've had most of those accounted for. The purpose of those, there's roughly 250 
what I would call primary first responders. So this would be police, sheriff, uh, fire department throughout the county and our city. And what we want to do is provide two to every one of those, uh, one that they can wear on day A, then on day B, they can wear the second one while the previous one is being washed. It's important to note that these masks, the, the purpose of the masks is not to prevent anyone from wearing the mask of getting COVID-19. We got clarification on that from our hospital here. The purpose of the mask, uh, because this is a disease that a virus that is spread through droplets, uh, the mask catches those droplets. And if you're asymptomatic or if you, uh, so if you have COVID-19, you could be asymptomatic, meaning you don't have any symptoms. Um, or if you do, you know, have a slight runny nose or whatever the case may be, if you are a carrier of COVID-19, the mask will prevent the droplets from getting out and you would have um, uh, containment there at uh, the individual level. So you will start to see, uh, uh, last night at the council meeting, we encouraged all city employees to be wearing masks outside um, in the public. And again, the reason for that, every step along the way, we've taken measures to try to protect the safety of the city employees because they are essential uh, people in the community. We're an essential employer and, and they uh, continue to make the services of the city available. And so we did make that recommendation as a council last night to all the employees of the city. Mm -hmm. Parks, uh, we've had several park questions. Uh, so parks in general, the green spaces are open, but inside of parks, playgrounds are issued closed by the governor, basketball courts, tennis courts are issued closed by the governor, uh, swimming pools are issued closed by the governor. Um, currently the dog park is open. Um, I'll put an asterisk on that. Uh, we believe there's enough space out there for people to utilize and, and socially distance and, and be safe. If that gets abused, um, if we do start seeing groups congregate out there, uh, we will close that. But uh, currently that is still open. Uh, the golf course is open. We've taken several questions on that. Uh, please understand that there's 160 acres of open green space at the golf course. We have put rules in place to uh, practice social distancing um, as well as the cups are raised. You're not supposed to touch the flags. Um, every cart is sanitized when it's done. Uh, you can't have multiple people on tee boxes, so everybody has to be six foot apart. We believe that it's important to have an opportunity to get out and recreate outdoors. Uh, we would encourage people to use the trail system. Uh, again, if you come across somebody, make sure that you give everybody at least six foot of space. So if you're walking, jogging, running, bicycling, please remember to socially distance. Uh, shopping, we'd like to uh, thank the uh, retailers that are still open that are essential and, and please understand as a shopper they've had to make their own individual decisions about how to handle this. I know Menards, Walmart, Hy-Vee and Fairway have all made adjustments whether it's to hours or plexiglass at checker counters or uh, Menards has limited if you're 16 and under you can't go into the store. I know Walmart came out this weekend and announced uh, there's only a certain number of people that are allowed in the store at a time. So please be patient with them. Um, please heed the governor's recommendation to only shop one per family. Don't send your family out to the store. Please just send one person and uh, follow uh, the recommendations. Solid waste transfer station. Uh, of course, people are home more than they used to be. You know, I think the average in America is like 55 or 60% of the time you eat out at a restaurant. Obviously with restaurants closed and only offering pickup service, the amount of home trash is going up. And uh, initially the transfer station was closed uh, to everyone uh, all days of the week. We have starting this Saturday, correct? Starting this Saturday from 8 a.m. to 5 o'clock p.m., it will be open for residential trash drop-off if you live in the city of Spencer. I believe the, the Clay County residents that do not have garbage service that are allowed to use a transfer station also can, but it's for recycling and uh, residential refuse only. So no batteries, no uh, materials, paint, you know, nothing, no appliances. Nothing like that. It's going to be just a regular uh, residential waste. I'd close before we go into questions with uh, primary residents. The governor has been pretty strong in her language uh, about stay home, uh, get out only for the essentials, get out to grocery shop if you need to get medicine, if you need to uh, recreate, but otherwise stay home. And we're interpreting that as your primary residence. Uh, she has not used the term primary residence. But uh, we believe when she says stay home, that's what she means. Uh, we're coming into a season 
where a lot of people will want to get out to their cabins, to their lake homes, to their secondary homes. Uh, please, uh, we would really recommend to stay at your primary community in your primary house, um, your primary residence. Uh, we're taking every step that we can to mitigate the spread and transmission of COVID-19. Uh, we hope everyone is. If you do travel uh, to these other places, uh, for example, in Dickinson County, I know the supervisors uh, passed a 14-day quarantine expectation. If you're coming in um, from outside of the area to stay for a while, uh, you need to self-quarantine for 14 days. We agree with that. Uh, we think it's just good practice. It lets everything run its course. So uh, we would really encourage you to think about that as, as you or people you know travel. The governor has, has made two things very clear. Number one, they're taking the mitigation steps to protect the most vulnerable, which is age 60 and older. Uh, the census is broken down into 65 and older. In Spencer and Clay County, about 21.7%, so a little over one in five of our residents is in that at-risk group. And uh, we wanna do everything we can to uh, mitigate that. Uh, you might see the, the numbers on the maps and the total number of confirmed cases, and, and there are hot spots, as the governor says, throughout the state, Johnson County, Lynn County, Polk County. Uh, you might look at that map and go, well, Mayor, we only have two cases in Clay County. Uh, it's not that big a deal here. Uh, we only have two confirmed cases, and the goal is to have as few confirmed cases as possible. So uh, we're not looking to ratchet up and ratchet down. We're looking to do everything that we can in a prudent manner to stop the spread of the disease. That's our obligation and that's why we're doing what we're doing. Uh, we're not waiting for 10 confirmed cases or 20 or 50 to uh, make significant adjustments. We wanna create the safest, oper the safest environment for you to uh, uh, go about your business in and we feel that's what we're doing. And uh, with that, I'd entertain any questions that anybody might have. Uh, Mayor, we've had one question come through related to the clubhouse. Can you um, re-clarify the, the rules around the clubhouse? So the clubhouse itself is closed as far as congregating, multiple people being in there. Um, you're supposed to go in, do your transaction to pay your green fees and leave. Um, you can leave with a beverage, no different than a restaurant. So the restaurant is uh, able to sell you uh, beer unopened and things of that nature. So it's a very transactional relationship. There should be no loitering, no gathering. Um, you should get in and get out and stay socially distanced uh, during your time uh, in and out. And I, I would say it's also a, a fluid decision to keep the course open or not. So the determination of whether the course stays open is going to be based on the patrons uh, and or the governor. If the governor comes out and closes golf courses, it's closed. If patrons abuse social distancing and they gather, um, we'll close it. So it's open for now. Uh, please enjoy it responsibly. Follow the rules that are laid out and everyone can uh, move forward in that fashion. Any other questions? Um, I don't have any others that have come through that I can see. Is there anything you'd like to say, Amanda? Um, well, first, I'd like to thank everyone for their um, patience with us as we learn new technology and how to not only communicate with the community, um, but with one another. We did a Zoom council meeting last night that was um, a little bit like the Brady Bunch for a while, but I think <laughs> we got through it. And we'll continue to make, make improvements um, as we're able so that we can get the information out to the public cool. in the best manner possible. Um, okay, another question just came through. For the public, did she mention anything about financial institutions like banks? I'm assuming he's asking about the governor. Okay. Um, if those are closed or not. I don't believe I have seen an official, um, the term banking in her proclamations, mm -hmm. but I know most bank lobbies are closed. Mm -hmm. um, Banks are still open to conduct business. So, for example, on our last live call, I mentioned that my father was not well. Um, he has since passed, and we were able to get into his bank um, in his safety deposit box and in the lobby and things of that nature, but it was a very secured environment. Um, <clears throat> it was not open to the general public, and uh, there are some other businesses that are able uh, to operate that way as well. So there is some leeway, of course, if you have not been designated closed. Um, some people are taking the option upon themselves to close and uh, split their staffs working at home or working on site and then how they service their customers. But I don't believe I've seen anything specifically related to banking. Okay. 
Very good. Um, I don't have any other questions that have come through, um, but I would like to reiterate what the mayor said about the transfer station being open starting this Saturday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. for Spencer residents and rural Clay County residents for residential garbage and recycling only. Um, we will not take um, we will not take household hazardous materials, furniture, appliances, or uh, commercial or construction uh, debris. So please be mindful of that, and we'll continue with the same practices of only allowing 10 um, vehicles uh, on the premises at the same time, and we'll practice appropriate social distancing measures. So yeah. um, with I'll that- i just have a couple closing comments. Take it away, Mayor. All right. Uh, one fun item that we went over, uh, not COVID related, at the council meeting last night was uh, ATV ordinance. There's been, uh, I think the current ordinance is maybe five, six, seven years old, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, the Public Safety Committee uh, will be, is that meeting next week, Amanda? Monday. Monday. So the Public Safety Committee is uh, meeting Monday to review that ordinance and uh, look at other options that we might have to increase some of the uh, opportunity for citizens to use ATVs and uh, street legal vehicles um, in town. Uh, we've been working on this for a long time and I uh, just wanted to drop a little non-COVID related news uh, in there for the people. And you should know, as we do make these decisions, uh, we, number one, we don't want to close anything down. Uh, number two, we don't want to have to police or break up activity. That's not why we do what we do. Um, so we're in a uh, predicament where Number one, we have to enforce the governor's orders. Um, if you do violate one of the orders, it is a simple misdemeanor. Um, it is a, uh, 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 an arrestable offense, I guess you could say. And then you should know, when we do make these decisions, uh, we don't make them in a vacuum. So <clears throat> we consult uh, the hospital, we consult the county, we consult other towns. I know especially with our parks department, uh, Jared, the parks director, has been in contact with five, six, seven, uh, maybe more different communities about what they're doing and how they're handling it. And so what we really try to do is take a 360 degree look at it. Uh, we look at um, the impact it has on you, the citizen, and, and we look at how we're going to be able to support those decisions from a staff perspective, and then we deliberate and make our decisions. And so please know that Everything that we do, we have the best interest uh, for you at heart, and uh, we thank you for your patience. We're all going to get through this together. It's like one big family vacation, and we're all stuck in a, a, uh, a station wagon from the 80s, and uh, it gets a little chippy sometimes, I know, but uh, just breathe deep. Uh, stay calm. We're going to get through this. There is another side to this, and uh, appreciate everything that everybody does. That's all I would have.